Press. Namaste. Namaste, everybody. Welcome back to my class. How are you? Namaste. So let's start the class with the prayers we have learned so far. So now we are going to pray to Lord Ganesha, then Devi Saraswati, and then Devi Lakshmi. So join your hands and chant with me. Oh, Ganesha, Namaha, Vak. Pratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Guru Medeva Sarva Karyeshu Sarvada Shuk Lam Baradharam Vishnum Shashivarnam Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Vadanam Dhyaye Sarva Vigno Pashantaye And now a prayer to Devi Saraswati. Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kama Rupani Vidyarambham Karishyami Siddhir Bhavatu Me Sada And now a prayer to Devi Lakshmi. Namaste Astu Mahamaye Shri Pite Sura Pujite Shankha Chakra Gada Haste Mahalakshmi Namostute And now a prayer to Lord Rama and then Two prayers to Lord Krishna. Om Ramaya Namaha Ramaya Ramabhadraya Ramachandraya Vedase Raghunathaya Nathaya Sitaya Pataye Namaha. And now a prayer, two prayers to Lord Krishna. Oh Krishna Namaha. Krishna Vasudevaya. Devaki Nandanaya. Cha. Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha Vasudevasutam Devam Kamsachanura Mardanam Devaki Parma Nandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum. Very good. So today I'm going to talk about Mahabharata. Mahabharata is an epic like Ramayana. So Mahabharata is one of the two major epics of India. The other being Ramayana. And you know all about Ramayana. It narrates the struggle between two groups of cousins, Kauravas and Pandavas. Their conflict finally ended up in a big war and is called the War of Mahabharata. 
So as you already know, I have told you this story. Mahabharata is said to be the longest epic in the world with about 100,000 verses. That's a lot of verses. Sage Avyasa narrated this epic to Lord Ganesha, who wrote it down. And you remember the story that the pen he was writing uh, got broken. So then he used his tooth to write the Ramayana, uh, the Mahabharata. The king of Hastinapur had three sons, Dhritarashtra, Pandu, and Vidur. Dhritarashtra was the eldest and had the right to be the king, but he was blind. He is king, he was Dhritarashtra. So the Pandu, the next brother, was made the king instead. Dhritarashtra did not like it. Like, he was the eldest and he, he deserved the kingdom. He was the rightful ruler. But since he was blind, his younger brother, Pandu, was made the king. And so Dhritarashtra did not like it and was always jealous of his brother. Dhritarashtra had 100 sons. They were called the Kauravas. Duryodhana was the eldest. See, this is Duryodhana. He was the eldest of all the hundred sons. Pandu has five sons. See, he had five sons. Named Yudhishthira, he was the eldest. Bhima, Arjuna, Nakula, and Sahadeva. They were called the Pandavas. Both the Pandavas and the Kauravas grew up together, learning all the skills needed to be princes. So here is the teacher, and he's teaching him all the skills to be a good prince. The Pandavas, with their physical strength, positive attitude, good and generous deeds, were loved by all. The Kauravas did not like the Pandavas and were always evil, mean, vindictive, and jealous of them. So from the very childhood, the, the, uh, the Kauravas did not like the Pandavas and they were always fighting with each other. So the Kauravas and pa Pandavas were always fighting with each other, even though the Pandavas were the did good deeds. Was Duryodhana, the eldest of the Pandavas, invited all his cousins to the banks of the Ganga, Ganges, right? He took Bhima, he was the second oldest, away from the crowd and offered him poisoned food. Bhima was very fond of eating and ate, and so for fond of eating, ate that food and fell unconscious because the food was mixed with poison. Duryodhana and his friends tied Bhima with creepers and vines and threw him into the river. See, he, this is Bhima and the, 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 the Duryodhana and his brothers tied him with the uh, creepers and threw him in the river hoping that he will soon die. Bhima sank into the waters. Right? He then reached the kingdom of the Nagas or the serpents who lived in the river. See, then he went down and there he went deep down so that he went into the kingdom of the snakes. See, all these snakes are everywhere. The Nagas, or the serpents, gave him a drink, which made him very strong and immune to all poison. Bhima returned home to his family, so the snakes helped him 
because the the, the 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 snake people gave him a drink and he became very strong. So Duryodhana's plan to kill Bhima was unsuccessful. Once that teacher gave an archery test to the princess, to all the princes, right? The teacher asked him to strike the eye of a wooden bird placed on the branch of a tree. See, there was this bird and they wanted, he, the teacher wanted uh, the, the students to pierce this, the bird's eye. But before setting them, set their arrows loose, he asked each one of them a question. So he said, before you start shooting, I would like to ask you something. So let's find out what the teacher asked his students. He first asked Yudhishthira, the eldest of the Lord, what do you see there? He asked Yudhishthira, what do you see? To which Yudhishthira replied, I see a wooden bird, the branch and the tree and the leaves moving. He said, I, I do see a bird, but I also see the branch on which the bird is sitting and the tree and the leaves, uh, leaves you know, moving around. Everyone else replied similarly. They all replied the same. The teacher asked them, all to lay down their bows and arrows. He said, you are not fit for shooting. When it was Arjuna's turn, Arjuna uh, he said, I can only see the eye of the bird. So Arjuna said, I don't see anything else because I only see the eye of the bird because that's what I have to shoot. So the teacher was very happy. He said, yes, you are, you are very focused. That is when, when you, you know, you are, because the, you are just focusing on the eye. The teacher smiled. The other princess uh, had their eyes on everything, while Arjuna had set his eyes only on his goal. See, all the other students saw the bird's eye, but they saw other things also. But Arjuna had set his eyes only on his goal. The eye of the bird. Only Arjuna was permitted to shoot at the bird, which he did successfully. So what does this story teach us? This story teaches us to stay focused. See, if you just, if you focus, then you hit the bullseye. Whatever you are doing, put your whole mind to it. Let's not the mind wander here and there. If you are shooting, your mind should be only on the target. Then you will never miss it. If you are learning your lessons, think only of the lesson. So try to be focused and let not let and try not let the mind wander here and there. So this is what the story teaches us. After the death of King Pandu. Dhritarashtra became the king. The kingdom was equally divided between the Pandavas and the Kauravas. So here is Duryodhana. And here is Yudhishthira, the two elder brothers. And here is King Dhritarashtra, who is blind. So the, he divided, the, the kingdom was equally divided. But Duryodhana was not satisfied with his share. He wanted the entire kingdom for himself. He said, I don't want to share. I want the whole kingdom to myself. Tithrashtra, who could not become the king due to his blindness, also wanted his son Duryodhana to have the entire kingdom and be the future king. See, his wishes were unfulfilled when he was young. So he, he wanted, you know, that his son, should be the king and the entire kingdom should belong to him. So Duryodhana was all, Duryodhana and his brothers were always, dis, uh, you know, planning to kill the Pandavas and to take away their kingdom, right? So once Duryodhana 
challenge Yudhishthira to a game of dice. The rule of the game was that the loser will be exiled from the kingdom and would have to live in the forest for 12 years and spend the 13th, the 13th year in disguise. So he said, whoever will lose will have to go to the forest for 12 years and 13 years live in disguise. Duryodhana cheated at the game and defeated Yudhishthira. The Pandavas had to leave for the forest. He did, Duryodhana didn't win fair. He cheated and he lost the game. And so he and his brothers had to go to the forest. When the Pandavas were in exile, a sage Vyasa told them that after your exile, you will have a war with the Kauravas. The, the, the sage Vyasa predicted that uh, it's not that when you return after 13 years, you will be given the kingdom. There will be a war. Duryodhana is not going to agree to give you the kingdom. So he said to Arjuna, you should pray to Lord Shiva for the divine weapons. So Arjuna went to Mount Kailasha, to the Himalayas, and started worshipping Shiva. So he made a shivaling, and this is Arjuna. And he started worshipping Shiva, so that Lord Shiva will be happy and give him the divine weapons to fight in the war. So here you see, this is all the Himalayas, the mountain and the river is flowing. And Arjuna is praying to Lord Shiva so that Lord Shiva be happy with him. Shiva disguised himself as a hunter and he wanted to test Arjuna. So he disguised himself as a hunter. Just then a demon, Muka, attached Arjuna in the form of, and then there was a, uh, 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 there's a demon and he, was, he took a form of a wild boar and he attacked Arjuna. Arjuna shot an arrow and killed the boar. See, he shot an arrow and he killed the boar. But he saw another arrow in the body of the boar. And this arrow was shot by Lord Shiva, who disguised himself as a hunter. He wanted to just test Arjuna. He, uh, uh, Arjuna said, who dare shoot my prey? Like Arjuna said, who, 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 who shot my prey? Shiva in the hunter's form said, I shot the arrow. This is my prey. And Arjuna said, no, I shot the arrow. This is my prey. So both the Lord Shiva in form of a hunter and Arjuna started arguing. And a long fight followed between the two. And Arjuna became tired. And he said, I will fight after I have offered my prayer. He said, okay, let's rest the matter here. I will fight with you late. So then Arjuna, was, Arjuna went back and he was praying to Lord Shiva. And then he put a garland on Lord on his shivaling. And then he found the garland on the hunter's, uh, hunter's neck. Because Hunter was Lord Shiva himself. So, but to his dismay, he found the garland around the hunter's neck. He understood that the hunter was Lord Shiva. Shiva became very happy with Arjuna. He came to his real form. Like we worship Lord Shiva also as a, in this form, this is called a Shivaling. So, yeah. And he came to his real form and he gave this, you know, divine weapon, bow and arrow to Arjuna. So when, when these people after 13 years came back, Duryodhana refused to give Yudhishthira's kingdom when the Pandavas came back after 13 years. He said, no, I'm not going to give you the kingdom back. He told them, they, uh, that they would have to fight to get the kingdom back. He said, without fighting or without a war, I am not going to give you the kingdom back. 
the Pandavas did not want to fight and said Lord Krishna as their messenger of peace to the court of Dhritarashtra. Pandavas didn't want it to fight. He said if there is a, uh, if some solution would become, you know, that would be better. So they sent Lord Krishna as a peace messenger. Krishna asked them to return the rightful half of the kingdom to the Pandavas. So the Krishna is asking Duryodhana to return their, uh, you know, half the kingdom to the Pandavas. But Duryodhana did not agree. He said, no. Krishna then asked for just five cities. He said, okay, if you don't want to give the, the half the kingdom, just give them five cities. They will be happy with them. With which he also denied. He said, no, I'm not going to give them five cities either. Then Krishna said, okay, if you don't want to give them five cities, just give them five villages. They will be happy with that. Krishna then asked for five villages, which Duryodhana also denied. He said, no, not even five villages. Then Krishna said, okay, if you don't want to give five villages, at least give them five houses. Even that Duryodhana did not accept. He said, no, I'm not going to give them anything. If they want anything, they have to fight with me and my army. Finally, Krishna asked for one house. He said, all right, just give them one house. But that too was rejected by Duryodhana. He went on to say that he would not even give as much land as to stick a pin into it. So he said, no, nothing doing. I'm not going to give them anything. He's refusing everything to Lord Krishna. So the, the, you know, Lord Krishna's attempts for peace had failed and there was no way out but the war. Duryodhana was an evil guy. So as the preparations of the war was going, was being made, both the Kauravas, the Duryodhana's people, and the Pandavas were trying to get the support of as many kings as they could. They wanted other kingdoms to help them. So Duryodhana wanted Lord Krishna's army. So Duryodhana went to Lord Krishna, the king of Dwarka. Lord Krishna was the king of Dwarka and asked for his support. He said, you know, you should, you know, please help me. He reached Krishna's palace. This is Krishna's palace. But at that time, Krishna was taking a nap. So Krishna was taking a nap. So Duryodhana went and took a seat beside him. He said, okay, I will wait till Lord Krishna wakes up beside his head and waited for him to wake up. So he went, Duryodhana went to seek his help. And since Lord Krishna was taking a nap, he sat beside his head. At the same time, Arjuna came to Krishna to ask for his support for the Pandavas. Arjuna also wanted Lord Krishna's help. Arjuna was very humble, see? And he stood near Krishna's feet. He was not as proud like Duryodhana who went and sat near his head. He stood near his feet. And both of them were waiting for Lord Krishna to wake up. When Krishna woke up, he saw Arjuna first because he was standing near his feet. He didn't see Duryodhana because Duryodhana was sitting behind him. Duryodhana said, I have come to ask for your support in the war. He said, I have come to ask for your support in the war. Arjuna also made that same request. He said, please, Lord Krishna, could you help the Pandavas in the war? Duryodhana said, uh, I, I came uh, as Arjuna and you should help me and not him. He said, I came first before Arjuna. And so you should help me and not him. 
And Lord Krishna said, due to your pride, you sat beside my head. So I saw Arjuna first. But you are both dear to me and I will help you both. To one of you, I will give my army. I will, to one of you, I will give my whole army. And to the other, I will give my moral support. I will not fight, but I will give my moral support because I will not fight in the war. As I saw Arjuna first, I will ask him to choose. So Krishna said, either you can choose my army or you can choose me. But even if you choose me, I'm not going to fight. I will just be there as a moral support. Arjuna, without wasting a second, chose Krishna's moral support. He knew that with Krishna's support and guidance, the Pandavas would certainly win the war. So uh, Arjuna didn't want it to the army. He thought that if Lord Krishna is on his side, he, with his advice and his guidance, he will certainly win the war. Duryodhana was very happy that Krishna's huge and mighty army will be on his side. You know, Duryodhana said, ah, what is one Krishna going to do? I have his whole army on my side. So now the, 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 everybody was getting the both the par, both the par, Parvas and Parvas, Pandavas were getting ready for the war. So here you see the army of the Pandavas, Parvas, right? Big army, lords of king supporting the Parvas. And here you see the army of the Pandavas. So when the soldiers were gathered on the battlefield, Arjuna asked Lord Krishna to drive his chariot between the two armies. So Lord Krishna was driving Arjuna's chariot. So he said, because he said, I'm not going to fight. I will be just there. So then when both the armies were gathered, Arjuna said, I want to, you know, please bring my chariot in the middle so I can see both the armies. Arjuna felt great sorrow when he saw his grandfather, teachers, brothers, friends, and relatives on the opposite side, because they were cousins, right? The Kauravas and Pandavas were cousins. So they had, you know, the same grandfather, same teachers, same friends, relatives. So then when Arjuna saw all his, the, his people and relatives on the other side with, with whom he's supposed to fight, he became very sad with whom he must kill to win the war. He said, I have to kill all my relatives in order to win the fight. He was overcome by despair, became very confused, spoke of the evils of the war and refused to fight. He said, I'm not going to fight. I'm not, you know, winning doesn't matter to me. I have to kill all these people in order to fight. And I'm not going to fight. And he refused to fight. Then Lord Krishna. Arjuna knew he had to fight for his rights. He said, yeah, because the, the half of the kingdom belonged rightfully to his. So it, it was his right and his brother's right to have the kingdom. He knew that he's supposed to fight. But there was a conflict. It was duty on one hand. That was the right thing to do. And attachment on the other. And the attachment to his friends and family. And he, Arjuna was confused and did not know what to do. So there was a duty. The right thing to do was to fight. You know, because you cannot let Duryodhana bully bully his friends, his brothers, and not give them the kingdom. So that was the right thing to do. But then he was also attached with his uh, family, like the, the grandfather, the teachers, and he didn't want to kill them. So he didn't know what to do. And so he asked Lord Krishna to help him, to guide him, to tell him what is the right thing to do. So then Lord Krishna told him, 
And the, there is a text which is called Bhagavad Gita. So the 18 chapters of Bhagavad Gita form the discussion between Arjuna and Lord Krishna. So Arjuna, Lord Krishna said, no, you, you know, it is, uh, you know, and Bhagavad Gita means, Bhagavad means God and Gita means song. So Bhagavad Gita means the song of God or the teachings of Lord Krishna. Through his teachings, Lord Krishna finally convinced Arjuna that it was his duty as a warrior to fight and to establish peace and law and order. Because Duryodhana was a wicked man. He didn't do the right things. So he said, you have to kill Duryodhana so that, you know, there is peace and law and order. Because if there is no law and order, and if Duryodhana do whatever he wants to do, then, you know, there will be no peace in the country. And it is his duty to fight. So Lord Krishna, through, through the teachings in Bhagavad Gita, convinced Arjuna that it is what that, that as a warrior his duty is to fight. So the war began. And the war went on for 18 days. They fought for 18 long days. See here is Arjuna. So the chariot and here is Lord Krishna and here is grandfather and ended with the defeat of the Kauravas. Finally, the Pandavas won. Duryodhana and his brothers were killed, along with many other warriors from both the sides. But in the end, the Pandavas won the battle. After the Mahabharata war, Yudhishthira was crowned as the king of Hastinapur. And since he was a rightful ruler, everyone lived happily and peacefully under his rule. So let's see what, what was the root cause of this big war and what lessons we learned from this. The root cause of Mahabharata war was greed, jealousy, and revenge. Because King Dhritarashtra from the very beginning, he was blind and he was not made the king. So he was very jealous from the beginning. And he had the desire that his son Duryodhana should become the next king. So he didn't believe, you know, that the, the cousins should look peacefully and they should share the kingdom. Duryodhana himself was also greedy and wanted to be the king. He could have easily shared part of his kingdom with his cousins, the Pandavas, and avoided the war. But he didn't do that. But, but greed, the desire for taking revenge, and jealousy prevented him from doing what was right. He was just jealous of the Pandavas, and he wanted to take revenge, and so he did not share. And he ended, and it, that resulted in the war and ultimate the death of uh, uh, Yudhishthira, uh, uh, Duryodhana, and his brothers. So one should be very careful, right? Because being greedy and jealousy does not help, right? One should be fair and you know share things because greedy and jealousy just makes you very unhappy. And you all the time are making plans to take revenge. And then if the, the outcome is that you yourself become unhappy. So we should try to avoid greed and jealousy. So now I'm going to end the class with the prayers. So the, we have been reciting these two verses. Today we are going to learn a new verse. So you repeat. After me, Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityorma 
amritangamaya o shanti 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 one more time now you chant with me asatoma sadgamaya tamasoma jyotir gamaya mrityorma amritam gamaya om shanti 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 we are going to practice this verse many times and slowly you will remember it and the next two verses by now i think you you are you 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 must know it by now so chant with me kale varshatu parjanya prithivi sasya shalini देशो यम शोभ रहित ब्राह्मण सन्त निर्भय सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्त निरामया सर्वे भद्राणी पश्यु मचि दुख भाग भवे ओ शांति 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 लेट देर बी पीस 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 एवरीवेयर वेरी गुड and now as always is the time to accept the prasad gracefully from the blessings of lord krishna so rani and raj are going to give you prasad all right namaste goodbye फिर मिलेंगे सी यू लेटर हैव अ नाइस डे बाय बाय